Poverty, starvation, children in jail, many protests, but little prevail. How can we fix this world, oh so cruel? Well, surely not us, we're still in school. Oh true soul, let those lessons you have read in a book lead your way to see social injustice, something everyone else overlooks. Regard our government state in the decades past, recently slashed down a wall that couldn't last. Our mistakes have affected us greatly, whether in the past or present. Racism in its truest form, witness humanity's descent. First the racetrack, then camp, their dignity now with a dent. Sun in their eyes, dust in lungs, 120,000 behind bars without trial or consent. Come across and get caught. Now there is separation, deportation. Dreams of a better life turn to nightmares and humiliation. With our president, history must not repeat. He should not separate communities through a single tweet. Yet, to fully understand is hard. People have no former information. If we all do our part, they will understand what has happened to our nation. We must stand strong together, educate all so they know, we are stronger together, all friends, not foes.
Thank you to longtime community musician George Abe on the conch for that beautiful musical opening. And thank you to uh, Sarah Omura for sharing her original poem titled, Has Anything Really Changed? Winner of the Manzanar Committee's Student Award Program. She was accompanied by her father, Glenn Servich, on guitar. And audience, if you can indulge uh, two old friends with their daughters up here, to, we can take a selfie, that would be great. Thanks so much. <laughs> To echo Sarah's words, we must stand strong together with each other, educate so they know we are stronger together, all friends not foe. We are here today to stand together and educate at this year's Day of Remembrance celebration, oh, Day of Remembrance celebration at the Japanese American National Museum. On a personal note, I noticed in Sarah's bio uh, in the program that she enjoys K-pop reading and sleeping. Uh, I also love reading, sleeping, <laughs> and K-pop, in particular, BTS. Uh, so good afternoon. My name is Maya Kurosumi. I am a ninth grader at Culver City High School, and it is my honor to be one of your MCs today. Uh, oh. My grandma, Machi Okazaki Kuita, and her family were imprisoned at Heart Mountain and Crystal City, while my grandpa, Walt Kuita, and his family were incarcerated at Gila River. I'm Tony Osumi, and the very proud father and co-MC. I'm also a member of the Little Tokyo, <laughs> member of the Little Tokyo-based group Nikkei Progressives. I'm also an LAUSD school uh, school teacher, third grade, go room nine. <laughs> Seventy-eight years ago, my grandparents Chie and Yoshio Osumi were incarcerated at Post in Arizona. Today, we are so glad to see you all here on the 41st annual Los Angeles Day of Remembrance. We also uh, welcome everyone in the overflow room and all those who are live streaming online. Hi, Grandma, Franny. <laughs> Uh, as your MCs, it's our job to share logistical information for the day and make sure that the program runs smoothly. Restrooms are located behind us and on the second floor, and the second floor can be accessed through the elevator in the lobby. The, pro the program will run for about an hour and a half and will conclude with a light reception. There will be some optional participation asked of the audience. We also have a volunteer American Sign Language interpreter at the front here. Uh, if those services are needed, uh, please feel free to make your way up to the front. If you have any other questions or concerns, please find a Janum staff member. It is now my honor to introduce the President and CEO of the Japanese American National Museum, Ann Burroughs. With over 25 years of dedication and leadership to issues of social justice and human rights, uh, Ms. Burroughs' commitment to racial and social justice were shaped by her experience as a young activist in her native South Africa where she was jailed as a political prisoner for her opposition to apartheid. She is uh, also the recently elected chair of the Global Assembly of the uh, Amnesty International. Please welcome Ann Burroughs. Good afternoon, everybody, and, and welcome. Um, I, I'm so grateful to all of you for coming. Um, it's always such an honor and a privilege at Janum to have you in our house at any time, but it's a, tic it's a particular privilege to have you with us today. So, you know, I want to start off by thanking um, the organizing committee and the people who have literally spent months planning this, planning this event. So we couldn't be all gathered here today if it weren't for them. So instead of me... Um, making my own remarks today, I actually bring greetings to you from Norm Mineta, who is the chair of the Board of Trustees and is in fact in San Jose at a day of remembrance there. Otherwise, he would have been with all of you. 
but he has shared, he's sent us some remarks and he's asked me to read them on his behalf. So they're quite personal, but understand that they are, they are Norm's words. So I'd like to welcome all of you to Janum on behalf of the trustees, governors, staff, and volunteers as we gather to mark this day of remembrance. On February 19th, 1942, President Franklo Delano Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, which incarcerated 120 people of Japanese ancestry, the vast majority of whom were American citizens. We were stripped of our freedom, our rights, and forced to give up our jobs and belongings, our homes and the communities that we loved. I became an enemy alien in the land of my birth. For us, this is not an abstract history lesson, but an episode indelibly seared into our memories, an experience that we must never forget. The shameful chapter in American history demonstrates the corrosive power that fear, prejudice, and the failure of political leadership can have on the values and rights that matter most. As Japanese Americans who were directly infected by affected by incarceration, we're keenly aware of the parallels between our history and the present, the scapegoating after 9-11, exclusionary policies like the travel bans, and the closing of our borders to people lawfully seeking asylum from persecution, to the forcible separation of children from their families, policies that undermine the very thing that sets this country apart, our enduring commitment to freedom and justice for all. Our own history has taught us how easily our democracy can be tested. And it's taught us that we have a moral obligation as Japanese Americans to remind our fellow citizens of just how frail the institutions of democracy are if we don't protect them. In 1942, too many people sat quietly by while Japanese Americans were rounded up and incarcerated. Janum was founded on the principle that what happened to us during World War II must never be repeated and that no other group should be similarly targeted. Like all of us in this room, Janum has a heavy obligation to protecting this legacy. We are keenly aware of how easily divisiveness and discrimination create barriers and pit citizen against citizen. We are therefore deeply committed to encouraging dialogue and the inclusion of all voices and opinions, regardless of partisan position or political affiliation. Janum therefore requested that changes be made to the program to allow for all to feel welcomed here and for all participating organizations similarly to feel welcomed. In this spirit, one of the changes you will note is that the video presentation by Senator Maisie Hirono will be moved online and we invite you to view it on the websites of several of the organizations represented here. On this day of remembrance that unites all of us, we ask that you respect this. It's important that we remain united so that the dark chapter in history that we gather today to co commemorate is never repeated. Let us stand together to speak for others in these trying times. Let us together use our history to shed light on the present and work for a more just future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Burroughs. Now we would like to share a statement from Day of Remembrance 2020 Planning Committee presented by one of the committee co-chairs, Glenn Kitayama. Thank you very much, Tony. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, many of us are uh, disappointed that Senator Hirono's video is not being shown today. However, as a reminder, I want to 
I want to remind you that it will be streamed online through the Nikkei Progressives, Manzanar Committee, Progressive Asian Network for Action, and others. And I promise you today that we have a fantastic program planned for you. So good afternoon and welcome to the 2020 Day of Remembrance. As many of you know, we gather here every year at this time to commemorate the signing of Executive Order 9066, the law that authorized the forced removal of Japanese Americans from the West Coast into concentration camps during World War II. Not one Japanese American was ever indicted, let alone convicted of any act of espionage, sabotage during World War II. Yet the President, Congress, and even the Supreme Court broke the promises of the Constitution and justified the incarceration of Japanese Americans. During the 1980s, when Japanese Americans were fighting for redress and reparations, the Day of Remembrance was not only a time to remember Executive Order 9066, but also became a vehicle for us to take action. We stood in solidarity with other grassroots communities of colors throughout the decade because we viewed the incarceration of Japanese Americans during World War II in the context of our collective history that included the enslavement of African Americans and the genocide of Native Americans in the United States. In our community, the redress movement was never just a Japanese American issue. It was all for who believed in fighting for civil and human rights. Today, we stand at a critical juncture in our history. For the past three years, our government has criminalized immigrants, separated children from their family, and imprisoned families simply because they were seeking asylum at the border. Muslim Americans have been demonized, and a travel ban from Muslim-majority countries has been instituted and upheld by the Supreme Court. Over the past few years, we have seen the disturbing rise of alt-right nationalism that many had hoped were mere echoes of America's racist past. And unfortunately, current events are beginning to point to, quote, a failure of political leadership in 2020, just like in 1942. So what can we do now when our democracy is in crisis? We can stand together once again with other communities, communities of color and voice our support for the movement for black lives and Black Lives Matter. We can fold a crane in support for Sudu for Solidarity to demonstrate to the world that Japanese Americans are opposed to the detention and incarceration of families seeking asylum at the southern border. We can write letters and call our representatives to make sure our voices are heard in Congress. But most of all, we can organize with our friends, families, churches, temples, mosques, and community groups around the challenges that we are facing in 2020 and create a blueprint for the social, social justice that we want to see. We have the power to change our part of the world. And today, we can take the first step. Welcome to the Day of Remembrance. Democracy in Crisis, 1942 and 2020. Thank you, Glenn, and the DOR committee. Each year as time passes, it becomes more and more important to highlight and honor the enduring legacies and stories of those who experienced firsthand America's concentration camps during World War II. We honor the first generation Japanese American immigrants, the Issei, who faced racism and discrimination coming to this country to make a living and a home for themselves and their families. We honor their children, the second generation Nisei, who often bridged different worlds at home and at work or school and fought for their rights to be US citizens in a country filled with racism and violence. We honor their strength and resilience. And we think of the generations that followed, the Sansei and the Yonsei and the Gosei like me, who have felt the after effects of the trauma caused by Executive Order 9066 even to this day. Each year in our camp roll call, we honor these Japanese ancestry we, we, we uh, honor those Japanese ancestry, both citizen and non-citizen, who were directly impacted by Executive Order 9066 and forced to be removed from the West Coast of the United States and herded into one of 10 War Relocation Authority concentration camps or 30 Department of Justice and INS camps.
We now invite the representatives from, from Boy Scout and Girl Scout troops from Girl Scout Troop 12135 of the Nishi Honganji Buddhist Temple, Boy Scout Troop 242 of the Christ Lutheran Church, Boy Scout Troop 764 of the Venice Japanese Community Center, and the Boy Scout Troop 361 and Girl Scout Troop 1521 of the Evergreen Baptist Church of Los, An Los Angeles to begin the procession of camp banners. This year, the scouts will be accompanied by a survivor of the camp they stand by who knows firsthand the importance of remembering and what happened and ensuring that it never happens again. Now, as we go into the camp roll call, we invite you to stand when the camp you were called, the camp you were sent to is called. If you yourself were not incarcerated at one of the camps listed, please stand at the end when we um, indicate for a moment of honoring and remembrance. By the end, we should all be standing in solidarity. The War Relocation Authority Concentration Camps. Amachi, Colorado, 7,318 people, represented by Bin Tonai. Gila River, Arizona, 13,348 people, represented by George Sugimoto. Heart Mountain, Wyoming, 10,767, represented by Sam Mihara. Jerome, Arkansas, 8,497, represented by Richard Murakami. Manzanar, California, 10,046, represented by Marge Kohatsu. Minidoka, Idaho, 9,397, represented by Norma Jean Yamashita. Poston, Arizona, 17,814, represented by Ben Fuduta. Rower, Arkansas, 8,475, Represented by Kanji Sahara. Topaz, Utah, 8,130. Represented by Esther Taira. Tule Lake, California, 18,789. Represented by Bill Nishimura. The 100th Infantry Battalion, the 442nd Regimental Combat Team, and the Military Inter Intelligence Service, represented by Don Seki, who cannot be here today. Department of Justice Camp, Crystal City, Texas, represented by Chieko Kamisato. And now the other Department of Justice Camps and Citizen Isolation Centers, 5,500. Alexandria, Fort Livingston, Louisiana. Angel Island, California. Bismarck, Fort Lincoln, North Dakota. Crystal City, Texas. Eastern Boston, East Boston, Massachusetts. Ellis Island, New York. Florence, Arizona. Fort Meade, Maryland. Fort Richardson, Alaska. Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Fort Sill, Oklahoma, Fort Santon, New Mexico, 
Hono Uli Uli Hawaii, Kalaheo Hawaii, Kennedy, Texas. Kilauea, Hawaii, Kuski, Idaho, Lordsburg, New Mexico, McCoy, Wisconsin, Missoula, Montana. Montreat Assembly in North Carolina, Old Rattan Ranch, New Mexico, Sand Island, Hawaii, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Seabrook, New Jersey. Seganville, Texas, Sharp Park, California, Stringtown, Oklahoma, Tullahoma, Tennessee, Tuna Canyon, California. Citizen Isolation Centers, Loop, Arizona, Moab, Utah. Please stand now as you are able, as we take a moment to honor all those who were forcibly removed and lived in America's concentration camps, as well as those Japanese Americans who lived outside the military zones and suffered from the racism and hatred heightened by executive order. We also pay tribute to the thousands of Japanese Latin Americans, German and Italian Americans who were incarcerated by the US government. And we pay our respects to all those who are no longer with us, family members, friends, activists, and community leaders who left the community and the country a tremendous legacy about the camps, rebuilding lives and communities, the Japanese American experience, and about fighting for justice. If you are able, please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you, please be seated. We would like to thank the Manzanar Committee for the use of these beautiful camp banners. We'd also like to honor community leaders who passed away in 2019. Although we continue to lose a large number of Nikkei each year, we pay tribute to 12 who worked on redress and reparations, education about the camps, or who contributed uniquely to our history. To do this, please join me in welcoming Richard Katsuda and Keo Chi of NCRR and the DOR committee. Jeff Adachi, 59. Paul Bunai, 99. <clears throat> Hitoshi Harry Kajihara, 91. <clears throat> Hiroshi Kashiwagi, 96. Greg Marutani, 71, oh, 72. Dean Matsubayashi, 49. Wat Misaka, 95. Reverend Paul Nagano, 96. Oh, 98. Lucille Nakahara, 94. Esther Takei Nishio, 94. Dr. Bo Sakaguchi, 93. Hank Umemoto, 91. With gratitude and respect. Thank you, Richard and Kay, for that powerful tribute. As we heard from the DR committee statement earlier today, this year we, fo we are focusing on converse, our conversation on how our democracy was thrown into crisis when Franklin D. Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, incarcerating over 125,000 people without due process. 
This act was later declared to be due to racial prejudice, wartime hysteria, and a lack of political leadership by the government's own 1981 Commission on Wartime Relocation and intern uh, Internment of Civilians. We see parallels to the atrocities happening today with political leaders endorsing or turning a blind eye to children separated from their families as they cross the southern border. Ever rising tides of Islamophobia and attacks of white supremacist violence against communities of color across the country. We know that when our democracy is in crisis, our communities need to come together, to stand together. Both our elected officials and grassroots leaders, like our next speaker, lead the fight against injustice through empathy and bold action that bridges communities. Satsuki Ina was born during time at the Tule Lake Segregation Center, a maximum security American concentration camp during World War II. Writer, activist, and psychotherapist, she has spent her professional career seeking to understand the long-term impact of collective and historic trauma. She is Professor Emeritus at California State, Sacramento, California State University of Sacramento and currently provides consultation to organizations and communities addressing collective and intergenerational trauma. She is co-organizer of Tsuda for Solidarity, a direct action project of Japanese American social justice advocates working to end detention sites and to support frontline immigrant, refugee, and religi religious communities targeted today by racist, inhumane policies echoing the very actions that led to the incarceration of people of Japanese ancestry. So please join me in welcoming Satsuki Ina to the stage. Thank you to the organizing committee of the Day of Remembrance. I, it's an honor to be here today with you. I'd like to dedicate my brief remarks uh, in honor of Sue Kunitomi Embry who had a vision of bringing the Japanese-American incarceration story forward, even when our community was still stymied by silence about the concentration camp experience. She was one of the earliest community leaders to establish a pilgrimage to, an America, to one of America's sites of shame, and which would, through her efforts, become the Manzanar National Historic Site. Inspired by an even broader vision, she is someone who stood in solidarity with labor, women, and other underrepresented groups. Today, she inspires the work of Tsudu for Solidarity, whose mission it is to educate people about the injustice of the World War II incarceration of Japanese Americans. To gather Japanese Americans for a mass pilgrimage to heal our wounds and stand in solidarity with targeted groups today. 2020 is actually 75 years since the closing of the camps. And what I'd like to do today is, is share with you um, lessons learned through the efforts um, that Sudu for Solidarity as a collective of grassroots uh, people, intergenerational Japanese Americans and allies uh, who have gathered at various sites to protest the current unjust incarceration of innocent people seeking asylum. One thing that um, we didn't realize would happen for us is that uh, by protesting, by standing up for another group of people being targeted today in the way we were targeted, there was a powerful healing for ourselves. The opportunity to speak out in ways that we never could, even decades after our own incarceration. There is something about being empowered to demand justice and to speak out in protest. But one of the things that was even more important is we develop connections with other allied groups, with Black Lives Matter, with Bend the Ark, Council for Arab American Relations, United We Dream, Brown Beret, and many multiple indigenous organizations. And we would go to these events, these protest actions, big ones, national ones, and um, we would shout and then we'd part. And um, so we decided that 
After each action, we would try to gather people together to sit face to face and do, do something very simple. And that was to share our stories. And we learned that there were many differences that we shared, different historical periods of time, different ways of viewing the world, different cultural traditions. But we learned that when we came together to stand for one another, that there was a healing between our communities. There was a healing inside of each of us. When we were in uh, Tsuda for Solidarity, we went to the border in Laredo. And our intention was to uh, meet with mothers and children who had just recently been redu uh, uh, released and were waiting for uh, proper papers and uh, process to locate their families. And this uh, center was run by young uh, DACA students. These were young, undocumented uh, students who were working and going to school in the daytime and then in the evening and on the weekends, coming to this Laredo Center to help the mothers translate for them paperwork, help them get bus tickets, um, how to navigate the world that they had come seeking help and freedom and safety. And um, we thought, well, what we could do is gather some funds and help provide uh, for some support for them. Uh, and we learned that they didn't have a washer and dryer for you know, 250 women with their children. And I, I realized these women had, some were pregnant, some were still nursing their babies, many had toddlers, had crossed a whole continent. Something had happened for them to decide that it was worth the risk to take this journey so that their children could be safe. And when they got to the border, they were told, look for the man with the hat. They're talking about the border patrol hat. When you see the man with the hat, just put your arms out and say, asylum, and they'll take care of you. But the stories we heard were, were completely different. They were handcuffed. Children were chased by these dogs. They were thrown into these cement, what they called the refrigerator, cement blocks um, with no, no protection, no bedding, no blankets, until the van came to pick them up to transport them to the prisons, which are called family residential centers, much like our relocation centers. Most of them were young mothers. So when we got there, we were so happy that we were going to be able to um, support them to get their washer and dryer. And um, they seemed shy and standing back and babies crying and sitting on mother's laps. And um, so we decided, let's, let's sit in a circle. And um, so in this room, there might have been about 30 of us. Half of them, the mothers and children, and the other part, these young college students. Uh, and, uh, you know, 15 of us uh, Japanese Americans. And um, we thought it would be a really good idea to just go around the circle and do something very simple. And that was to sit and share our stories. And uh, one of the students agreed to uh, translate. So one, one of the uh, Sansei men who had been held in Topaz, who was born in Topaz, stood up and shared his story and said that he had spent his first four and a half years uh, as a prisoner, as a child prisoner. And... Um, how he wanted to be here to give hope to these mothers and children, to say that it was a struggle and yet we persevered and 
we're here uh, alive and well. And uh, the woman next to him was one of the uh, asylum-seeking mothers. And she had her baby in her arms, and she stood up, and she had tears streaming down her eyes. And she said, I've just been released after nine months. My older daughter, who's 14, was separated from us, and I don't know where she is now. She was placed in another facility. And nine months seemed like a long time. But when I hear that you were held for four years, I can barely stand the pain. And I realized that she was weeping for us. And in that moment of pure compassion, there was a connection that I never dreamed could happen with a person who spoke a different language, who came from a different country, who, who was in such desperate condition. She had in her heart space for empathy, for what we had experienced. We went around the circle, and several times the um, translator had to stop because she was crying so hard, because all of us were crying. Uh, we're crying for each other, and we're crying for ourselves, what had to be endured when oppression, fractures and splits, our personal psyches, our relationships with each other, our relationships in our families and in our communities. So my involvement with Tsuru for Solidarity is definitely about protest. It's about affirming our rights in a democracy to stand up for those who are suffering the injustice being perpetrated today. But it's also about healing. And you know, days of remembrance. To remember is an act of dissidence. Because the perpetrator of an atrocity like the incarceration in 42 and 2020, silence prevailing is what the perpetrator would like. They would like all of this to be forgotten. So days of remembrance is an act of dissidence that we must continue every year, every day, every week. So I wanted to just share a couple paragraphs with you about uh, what we'll be doing in Washington, DC. Many components of our program is about healing, healing ourselves and healing our relationships with other communities. We are very invested in working across communities uh, to stand together in solidarity. It's an important part of our mission, not to stay isolated. Our efforts of, as people of color has been marked by separation and conflict and strife. And we're, we're trying to bring love to this protest, not hate. And um, so, so these healing circles for change is what, is what has emerged. So I'll describe it to you briefly. <clears throat> Racism, religious persecution, Gender bias, homophobia, and every other form of oppression causes fractures in whole systems. Those systems, the personal, interpersonal, family, community, society, and nations, operate optimally when whole, interconnected, balanced, and well integrated. But when intentionally split and divided by systems of power dominating those who are vulnerable and powerless, the victim's sense of self becomes divided. Families and communities are fractured, resulting in barriers to understanding and connection. Walls, both concrete and illusory, are built, dividing us so that we can no longer see or be seen by one another. These consequences are difficult and often resistant to repair and healing. With social consciousness and the intentional decision to be with one another, we're able to not only physically see and hear one another, but to emotionally hold one another in mutual respect and empathy. 
Oppression, by definition, is a cruel and prolonged form of control. It results in varying degrees of trauma, often leading to the shutdown of our true and authentic selves for the sake of survival. The humiliation and fear can be passed on, internalized, and made unconscious. As victims of oppression trauma, we learn to suppress and compartmentalize not just our stories, but parts of ourselves. This results in a splitting of our consciousness. We may appear fine, normal, outwardly, but internally, we may be deeply isolated, filled with unexpressed anger, hopelessness, and depression. So when we gather in a circle representing wholeness, we come with intention to engage authentically and express what is true for us through our customs, culture, language, traditions, and stories. We participate in creating safety for one another through our empathic listening and complete presence. We plan to conduct 50 of these healing circles for change uh, during our national pilgrimage to Washington, DC. So at the same time in the same building, there will be 500 people sharing their stories with each other across communities. So 2020, 75 years since the closing of the camps, we're hoping also 2020 will mark the beginning of the closing of the camps today. And we hope that you'll join us and that 70 years from now, your name will be remembered as someone who stood up for someone else. Thank you. Please join me in another round of applause for Satsuki Ina. As our event comes to a close, we want to remind everyone to not only remember, but also take the energy from this room outside, beyond this space. As Satsuki Ina mentioned, Sudu for Solidarity will be converging in Washington, D.C. for a mass action in June 2020. We encourage you to find more information at the Sudu for Solidarity table and online. Our community needs to stand strong to say never again is now and be advocates for those who are on the front lines of xenophobic mass incarceration today. 2020 is a big year for our democracy. We face another election which will shape the future of our democracy in more ways than we can imagine. As a ninth grader, I can't vote yet, but you can, and we're asking you to get out there and make your voice heard. We have a table from the LA City Clerk's office here. Yeah. Well, you can you can look you can look for them. Okay. Um, uh, you can register to vote there if you aren't already. And if you're under 18 like myself, but will be 18 by the election, you can pre-register to vote. Voting begins on February 29th and continues to the primary day, March 2nd. We encourage you to take a stand with the ballot not just at the national level, but also at the local level, with important ballot measures and local officials who will be shape our democracy and what it looks like for the future. LA City Clerk's Table has information about the new voting system and the census, which is incredibly important for all of us to do as it determines the political representation and distribution of resources. Uh, we also want to share some more of the exciting and important events that our friends and partners are hosting in the upcoming months. Save the date for the 41st annual, 41st annual Manzanar Pilgrimage, 51st annual Manzanar Pilgrimage on April 25th. I'll get it right. I'll get it right. You can find information at the Manzanar Committee's table by the door. We also encourage you to find out about the CARE, Council for American Islamic Relations documentary that follows CARE staff as they participated in last year's 50th anniversary Manzanar pilgrimage and, and explores the importance of solidarity between Muslim Americans and Japanese Americans. It will premiere on CARE's website this week, the anniversary of the signing of Executive Order 9066 on February 19th. And we also encourage you to attend the Gardena Valley JCI Day of Remembrance program next week, February 22nd. 
which will look at the untold story of Japanese Americans incarcerated in Hawaii. And the keynote speaker is Brian Nia. Today, we also have representatives from UCLA and their Building History 3.0 project on site today. Building History combines youth-driven research and creativity with Minecraft to teach the history of Japanese American World War II incarceration camps. Visit the tables um, upstairs by the barracks and then check out their website and short documentaries to bring building history into your home and classroom. We also want to let you know that you'll have the opportunity to watch um, Maisie Hirono's video at the Far East Lounge, which is just around the block here, right next to the Far East Cafe. Uh, it's a video message. It will start at 4.30, so please four, go. Four o'clock. Oh, it's 4 o'clock now, um, and it will run for a while. It's only three minutes, so please go in there. We only ask one thing, that you don't bring any food into the um, Far East Lounge. In addition, we also encourage you to take advantage of the free admission today here at Janum. Check out the three ex ex exhibitions they have today, including Transcend Transcendience, Heroes at Borders. And we also have uh, the artist, the exhibition artist today, Taiji Terasaki. He's here today. Can you raise his hand, please? Right here. Very nice. Please check that out. Um, it's made up of uh, many boxes. Uh, many of the organizations that are part of the DO organizing committee created memory boxes or memorial boxes located in the lobby to honor community leaders and community heroes who have passed and did transformative work at borders, both visible and invisible. Our keynote speaker, Satsuki Ina, is also featured in the exhibition, reading a poem she wrote, as she is indeed a hero who has uh, crossed bridges and crossed and <laughs> who crosses and bridges borders and divides. And finally, we encourage you to visit the many tables and of the different groups and organizations that are around this hall today, and you can learn the many ways you can get involved and fight for justice and democracy. This includes the DOR 2020 Organizing Committee members. Gopher Broke National Education Center, Japanese American Citizens League, Pacific Southwest District, Japanese American National Museum, Kizuna, Manzanar Committee, Nikkei for Civil Rights and Redress, Nikkei Progressives, Organization of Chinese Americans, Greater Los Angeles, and the Progressive Asian Network for Action. Oh, the Manzanar Committee um, also invites um, all the former incarcerates to do an all-camp yeah. pilgrimage, and they have more information over there at the side there. Please check it out. That's coming up. Um, we welcome you to stay and enjoy the wonderful refreshments brought to you by DOR member um, Carrie Morita and an incredible kitchen staff. If you haven't had it before, please stay. It's good. Uh, thank you so much for coming and being part of today. We are the future. We are democracy. Okay, let's, let's say it all together to end it off, okay? We are the future. We are democracy. <laughs> to quote longtime activist Grace Lee Boggs, we are the leaders we've been looking for. Thank you and safe travels home.